minus at a good price. But not to worry about us, we've already been caught. Have you seen any delicate sauce? Delicious. And can you answer our question? Golden Valley, the only microwave. Do you know? Confucius say nuggets of wisdom are never as tasty as these. Let me tell you another uh, story about modeling, right? Uh, in this case, it wasn't just print work. It was a model who also did print work, meaning his predominant uh, profession is, is being a model. Now, in order to do this, you need some things. Like, you need to be right, you know, the, the right look for a wide range of roles, not a narrow range. And uh, this man, when I worked with him, uh, his name was Paul, uh, he, I don't know how old he was, but he, 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 he would look like in his late 40s or some kind of a thing like that, just a little bit of gray starting. I'm guessing he was probably about six feet. There's an interesting thing. I might have the numbers mixed up, but uh, in modeling, in certain modeling, um, where you do clothes and, and you, you walk around or whatever. If you're a particular size, you will get more work because it fits you. Anyway, I, I don't think it mattered with him. And uh, he, I recognized, uh, we were working together, I recognized him uh, and because, I mean, he's done so much print work. Uh, also, um, uh, at the time, I liked Eddie Bauer kinds of clothes, and and so uh, he was always, for instance, throughout that catalog every every year that they make the catalog. So he he is working. Okay, uh, when I first got into professional acting, all I wanted to be, uh, uh, I didn't think I, you know. I've got to be a star. I wasn't like that. I just want to be a working actor. I just want to, you know, work and, and make a living at it and keep doing it and things like that. Without question, uh, Paul was a working model. Now, I know this is about commercials, but uh, he also did commercials. And um, again, I can't emphasize enough, if you think of the print work, for instance, that I did, and you just, it's just like advertising a product or a service or whatever, except it's just a single frame. Anyhow, we worked together at the famous golf course, Pebble Beach, down in Pebble Beach. I don't play golf, but, but you know, the one where they have the Crosby and the uh, tournament and the, the, all the stars and everything like that come out and play. Very famous, you know, exclusive probably kind of a club. I can't believe how much they were charging. I, I looked up at the thing and I, I thought I saw f $500 around or something. Maybe I have that wrong. This was a while ago. And so, anyhow, I was dressed up. Uh, they, they wardrobe me as kind of a, a Japanese businessman wearing Pebble Beach wardrobe. Okay, fine. And he was the American businessman taking me, you know, out play business golf or whatever, something. Now, we're not playing golf, and I don't know how to golf, and he didn't know how to golf. We're just supposed to be models, you know, uh, like we're over, you know, trying to put the thing in or this, and they're, we're in our golf cart. They got us a golf cart. Now, <clears throat> they did not buy out the golf course, so we had to take our uh, pictures, our photographs, in between and around all of the people who were making rounds playing golf. And <laughs> uh, I was amazed because, you know, that that Pebble Beach play, that's right on the Monterey Bay. It's, uh, the ocean is, the waves are crashing. You've probably seen it on television. And I saw all these people, like we'd stop and we'd wait for them. I think they call it play through, to play through. And then we'd get up and we'd take our pictures. So not to disturb anybody. And their golf balls were going in the into the water, into the ocean, into the surf. And they're bouncing on the rocks. 
I mean, I could play golf that good probably, you know, and I'm wondering what's happening. I later found out that a good deal of the business at Pebble Beach or fancier golf courses famous like that are just like what we're shooting. They're taking somebody from out of the country or out of the town. It doesn't matter how good they play golf. They just want to do a business deal and they take them and, you know, let's go play golf there, right? Okay, fine. So anyway, we had a lot of time to talk, sitting there waiting for these golfers. And of course, I remember distinctly at times we were concerned about getting hit by the golf ball. Anyhow, in between golf balls, I found out he worked as a model. He did shoots like what we were doing a minimum of three times a week. That is a lot. To be booked three or four times a week, every week, he's making a lot of money and he's doing really well. And I was talking to him about how he did it. Here we are in the golf cart, ducking golf balls. And he's telling me two of his secrets of how he does this, how he gets so much modeling work, model and print work. First of all, he has a Jeep that I later saw, like, you know, a, a Jeep Jeep, right? But it had a cab on it and it had a roll bar in the back seat, on the back seat, a roll bar. The whole roll bar is a clothing rack. <laughs> he goes around and the whole back of the car is wardrobe so that when a photographer or someone wants to hire him, one, they don't have to put out that expense for wardrobe. Now, I don't know where that money goes, but it doesn't go to buying or renting the wardrobe because they've got their pick. And I saw it. He's got every kind of tie that you... He used to go to uh, San Francisco to um, Union Square. And there were these people selling three for five dollars or something like that. Three for ten dollars, these ties. Anyway, he had... If you were, if you were a photographer and you're going to shoot him, you've got your pick of wardrobe in the back of his Jeep. Suits, this, sweater, shirts, this, that. All of the stuff that he's right for... That's how he shows up to the shoot, and that's what he's known for. So he's saving them money, and he's saving, making things, life a lot easier for them. Two, this was before email. So mail was lick a stamp and put it on, and the stamp cost money, right? Especially if you're sending, uh, you know, an 8.5 by 11 type of uh, envelope. He did mailings. He had a list that he accumulated over the years, and also from other agencies and model he accumulated a list, if I remember right, of 7,000 in the Western United States, 7,000, uh, well, maybe, no, it was more than the Western United States, 7,000, if I remember right. Now, I could be wrong or I'm not exaggerating, I could, just could be wrong, maybe it was 5,000, but who cares? Thousands, right, of addresses and labels he's got printed out, and he does mailings every two months of, I can't remember, it, it was like anywhere from two to 700, he's mailing every couple of months, that type of a thing. And the philosophy was simple and it made sense. He figured if he mailed, you know, his pictures in a little note, and you know, a little business package, right? Not all of his pictures, but, oh yeah, it's him. They know him. They get to know him. They see it coming across. But if that envelope, let's say, crosses, you know, 500 photographers' desks this particular week, the odds are good that some of them are looking for his particular type, which was a very marketable type of businessman and, you know, uh, 
Mr. You know, nice guy and blah, blah. Okay, so if that crossed there and a shoot was coming up and they were planning it in the next month or two months or whatever, or the shoot was coming up and they had to cast, or they were having a problem casting, there's a good chance that a certain percentage of those will pay off. And they did. Didn't that cost a lot of money mailing that? Yeah, it sure did. But the, what do they call it, the ROI, the return on investment, was three to four print jobs a week, every week. So, this is the kind of people you're going up against. It's so funny um, uh, because, you know, where did he spend, where did he spend all of his money? Birdie or whatever yacht, 20s yacht. I think it was 20. The yacht was, uh, it, it wasn't huge. It was like a sail, large wooden old sailboat. It was formerly owned, if I remember correctly, by Stan Laurel of Laurel and Hardy, and I believe it was at a time owned by Ernest Hemingway. And he took all of this money he made, and he lived on the boat, and he restored it with original brass handles. I mean, that must cost a fortune. Original, original, not you know, make-believe or modern knockoffs. The original, he was going to make the whole thing original. And and uh, I guess everybody has their money going somewhere, but, well, he worked hard for it. So anyway, there's a couple of inside secrets. By the way, he and I eventually were going to get together and do a seminar. And I was going to do the acting end of how not to get ripped off, okay? And he was going to do the models, modeling, models end of how not to get ripped off in the business. And he get, came up with a great title, Before You Sign, <laughs> okay? And we we're going to tell this. It didn't go anywhere. A few people who have gotten ripped off wanted to come to the seminar. What they all wanted was how to become a successful actor and a successful model in 10 easy lessons. <laughs> That's what would have solved. Nobody wanted any part of the truth. <laughs>